this is a, an update paper, a third update uh, of paper. Um, originally, we had presented on LNG bunker vessels uh, and barges in November 2017 uh, uh, at the RENA LNG conference in Glasgow. And at that time, we'd introduced it as a placeholder for future updates for an emergent uh, ship type and subsector in LNG shipping. Uh, 26 months on, uh, this is our second update and our third paper. I have to thank, uh, just starting with a, a thank you to Rena um, for the first speaking slot today. I specifically asked for it for a, a flight this afternoon to uh, China. And I have then to be thankful to British, to British Airways for allowing me the time uh, to attend the conference uh, for, the, for the whole uh, of the period uh, uh, for the next two days. Uh, my uh, title at the end is incorrect and the bio in the uh, presentation is incorrect. I'm now based in uh, Shanghai. Although you don't need to wear face masks, I was, have not been there uh, for around three weeks now. Okay, um, the purpose of our paper it then is to offer an update um, of our 2017 and 2018 uh, papers on LNG bunkering uh, vessel fleet development. As I'm the first speaker, uh, and as there are other speakers talking um, about the same subject, uh, I'm going to specifically focus on the uh, fleet development uh, as I think it could be a, a suitable introduction for the follow-on speakers. So there will be a lot about, uh, in, in the coming slides, about the numbers of ships, where they're being built, uh, the, 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 the types of tanks uh, being applied, and less of the content of the paper as such. But I will also give a, a, a brief overview uh, of receiving ship compatibility, um, and that is a, a recap uh, of material that we had presented uh, for the second paper in Athens in December uh, 2018. Okay, this is going up and down. It's somebody, somebody's upstairs. It's not me that's making the, <laughs> making the screen go. Okay, great. Um, uh, and that recap uh, from uh, on the receiving ship compatibility um, is just because it's expected to be new material for a different audience attending today. Uh, and then finally, uh, a slide on uh, risk assessment uh, considerations for uh, simultaneous operations. And that's newly added content uh, for our paper update uh, for, for this year. This is the uh, a, a montage uh, of the 2018 existing uh, fleet of bunker vessels. Uh, you can see uh, there were, uh, at, at the end of 2018, um, eight vessels in service, of which uh, three were conversions. Uh, and, okay, this is, uh, again, an extract of the 2018 paper. Uh, you look top to bottom, left to right, in terms of date order. The first vessel uh, being the conversion of the sea gas in 20. 13, uh, and was then followed by four purpose-designed uh, LNG bunker vessels, the NG Zebrugge, uh, Coriolis, uh, Cardissa, and the Keros. Coral Methane was a multi-gas ship which was converted to an LNG bunker vessel, and the Othmendi uh, was a liquid fuel bunker vessel uh, which had installed depth tanks. And finally then, the Clean Jacksonville barge uh, built for the port of Jacksonville uh, to uh, supply LNG uh, to uh, the Tote Maritime ships operating to Puerto Rico. Uh, this, um, and this is the last slide of images, I think, in the, in the presentation. Uh, here are two images of the uh, 2019 deliveries. There were just two deliveries in 2019 of LNG bunker vessels, and both of them uh, for the Amsterdam, Rotterdam, Antwerp uh, ports, uh, port areas. So uh, Titan, Titan LNG uh, delivered uh, the Flex Fueler uh, 1 barge um, in June uh, last year, 
uh, and around the same time, uh, the LNG London, an inland waterway uh, LNG bunker vessel, uh, was also uh, <coughs> delivered um, for the uh, port of Rotterdam, operating out of the gate terminal. So, okay, uh, that's a little bit of a uh, little bit of images to start the presentation. Now into more uh, hard data. Um, this then is the 2019 existing fleet. So you've seen the images there. This is the 10 cases uh, listed uh, on the left-hand column, the ship name, ship owner. And we've used types. The type acronyms are uh, the acronyms that are typically used by Asian builders. They don't call them LNGBV. They just go straight to LBV for LNG bunker vessel. Uh, LBB for bunker barge, and then an inland waterway uh, bunker vessel. These are the years of delivery, uh, capacities uh, for each of these LNG bunker vessels, the port of bunkering uh, operations, and the uh, first bunkering operation uh, for each vessel. Uh, and all of this data is in the public domain. It's based upon uh, press reports, trade press reports, and trade data. This is the uh, 2020 uh, list of uh, existing uh, well, vessels under construction uh, of LNG bunker vessels and barges. And at the time of uh, writing, uh, there are a further 11 uh, bunker vessels and barges uh, under construction for delivery in 2020, uh, which comprises eight purpose designed. LNG bunker vessels, uh, two purpose-designed bunkering barges, uh, including one uh, articulated tug and bunkering barge, uh, and one uh, final case here of which there's uh, limited public domain data uh, of a rebuild of a, a, a liquid bunker tanker into a, an LNG bunker, a bunker vessel, bunkering vessel. This is the uh, 2020. Uh, uh, what is known, what is shown in the public domain uh, at the time of uh, uh, at the time of writing the paper. And for 2020, uh, one there are uh, five uh, LNG bunkering vessels and barges on order, uh, comprising uh, four purpose-designed LNG uh, bunkering vessels and one purpose-designed LNG bunkering barge, uh, an articulated uh, tug and bunkering barge, again for US uh, coastal trade, but for Polaris New Energy. The last order shown here for MOL uh, was announced on the 5th of December. Uh, and in my uh, script here, I've, I've indicated that it's possible that there may be further orders placed, and actually already this data uh, it is a little incorrect. There was a further order for an 18,000 cubic meter LNG bunker vessel placed at uh, a Dimipo dockyard uh, for 2021 uh, delivery for uh, K line of Korea for a Shell charter. Uh, and an unusual case, actually, that new order. Uh, and, and is also shows uh, some of the diversity of technical solutions. It's an 18,000 cubic meter LNG bunker vessel uh, with uh, three uh, IMO Type C cylindrical tanks of 6,000 uh, cubic meters capacity. Okay, um, this it, bar chart here shows uh, deliveries to 2021 of purpose designed uh, LNG bunkering vessels and barges. It's based on a data available at the time of writing. Uh, and by 2021, uh, there will be 23 purpose-designed uh, LNG bunker vessels and barges in service. Uh, as of today, the purpose-designed and built LNG bunker vessels and barges uh, numbers eight units. Uh, and by, by the end of 2021, a cumulative uh, total uh, of LNG fuel cargo tank capacity uh, in this purpose design fleet of around 152,000 cubic meters. 
Um, a, a little note here, and again, this, this, this point about uh, the diversity of design solutions. Um, looking at the number and diversity of design solutions adopted for bunkering vessels and barges, uh, the, you know, my colleagues as authors, uh, we may plan for a further, uh, possibly a final update uh, paper in 2021. Uh, once uh, data is accessible in the public domain, uh, or released with permissions from the owners and shipyards uh, for the fleet of ships coming in 2020. There are two types and three configurations of LNG cargo tanks in the LNG bunker vessel fleet. Uh, three configurations are uh, two IMO type C uh, tank configurations, both uh, cylindrical uh, as well as in one case the Coriolis uh, bilobe tanks, uh, as well as a uh, prismatic membrane, of which the prismatic membrane type uh, is uh, exclusively now uh, Technigas Mark III uh, flex type. Uh, notable trends in terms of uh, tank, tank type and configuration include, um, and this figure, uh, even though the order book is growing, uh, has more or less constant uh, in terms of, in percentage terms, around 42 of the 51 uh, LNG tanks manufactured for these different ships have been uh, IMO type C cylindrical type. And that 82, that represents an 82 percent, uh, percent number, and that figure is more or less constant over the years. So uh, there seems to be a dominant preference for IMO type C. In terms of prismatic tanks uh, with membrane type cargo containment systems, uh, they have been adopted for um, 51,000 meters cubed out of that total of 152,000 meters cubed by the end of uh, 2021, which represents around 33% of capacity. Uh, and that's in a small number of ship cases, around four cases. Uh, and that may, represents a growth in the uh, overall, uh, uh, in capacity terms, the adoption of uh, membrane tanks, uh, and, and is a, um, probably a, um, a consequence of larger <laughs> bunker vessels being adopted. Okay, those um, summary, that summary slide here is uh, uh, expressed in uh, a table uh, for the existing fleet uh, with the uh, shipyards shown on the uh, left hand side uh, and the tank type and number of tanks and capacity uh, by year in the uh, columns. Uh, and a notable trend in this uh, shipyard track record is for the existing fleet, uh, three of the four purpose-designed LNG bunker vessels uh, were built in uh, Korean shipyards. Uh, this is the, then the 2020 and 2021, uh, again an extract of a, a spreadsheet. Uh, showing the shipyard and tank type deliveries. And a notable trend here uh, for the uh, shipyard track record is for the ship deliveries in 2020 and 2021. Eight out of the 12 uh, purpose designed LNG uh, bunker vessels are on order or to be delivered in 2020 and 2021 uh, from uh, Chinese shipyards. Okay, um, now on to uh, a recap of the uh, uh, LNG uh, receiving ship compatibility um, materials that were presented uh, originally at the RENA HIM HIMT uh, conference in Athens in December 2018. In the next two slides, uh, summarized are compatibility issues arising from uh, tank types, uh, bunkering vessel versus receiving ship, uh, and fuel transfer and receiving systems. Again, uh, the uh, bunker 
transfer system and the LNG fuel receiving system. Uh, this we have identified in our uh, paper and uh, uh, identified in the notes associated uh, for the paper as a critical aspect for the specification and design of an LNG bunkering vessel is its compatibility with the expected LNG fuel receiving ships. And to date, uh, most LNG fuel receiving ships have been coupled in long-term gas fuel supply contracts associated with nominated ports and specific bunker vessels or barges. And this has facilitated early consideration of compatibility issues. So let's look at these next two slides. I won't um, dwell on them in too much detail. Um, this is the, in the uh, paper itself, it is a, a single page table, uh, but for presentation purposes, I've broken it into uh, two landscape tables uh, in two parts. Uh, on the left hand side, you have the bunkering vessel, the tank types. Um, in the bunkering vessel, and on the right-hand side, the tank types associated with the receiving ship, uh, receiving the LNG fuel, and a number of bullet points identifying uh, potential tank compatibility issues are identified in the center part of the table. In this next, uh, next slide is the second half of the single-page table that, there is, that is in the paper. And it shows on the left side the LNG bunker transfer system elements, so nitrogen purging, discharge, manifold. Here we have a hose, a bunker loading hose and vapor return hose, loading arm, LNG metering. And on the right hand side, the equivalent uh, receiving ship uh, fuel receiving system. And in the center part of the table, a set of uh, bullet points of potential compatibility issues identified. Okay, that's uh, in three slides is a recap of the uh, 2018 uh, elements on uh, receiving ship compatibility. Now a single slide uh, on a fairly big subject, actually this in itself could be a, a presentation uh, so it's, it's a fairly simple overview as such. And in fact, in my script, I've got two pages of script, so I'm not going to dwell on, dwell on it. Rather, I will uh, kind of simply uh, summarize, summarize the uh, content that's written into our paper. Uh, for the safe operation of LNG uh, bunkering, when a receiving ship is carrying out other operations, it is recommended that a uh, SIMOPS, uh, Simultaneous Operations uh, Risk Assessment, is performed. Uh, and the purpose of the SIMOPS Risk Assessment is, is to identify um, what simultaneous operations uh, could either initiate loss of containment, a loss of containment event, or contribute uh, to escalation of a loss of containment event uh, and its severity. Uh, SIMOPS risk assessment is carried out in accordance with ISO standards, uh, but prior to a SIMOPS risk assessment study, a safety zone study is performed. And the purpose of the safety zone study is to, uh, con is to control ignition sources uh, to uh, reduce the likelihood of igniting a flammable gas cloud due to an accidental uh, gas release during bunkering and also uh, to support uh, a determination of the essential minimum number of personnel inside a safety zone exposed to hazard following an accidental gas release. Determination of uh, safety zone distances can be carried out according to uh, the ISO um, 18683 uh, standard for LNG ship-to-ship -ship bunkering. And that standard provides for two methodologies, um, a deterministic method as well as a uh, risk, a more complex uh, risk-based QRA methodology. 
Uh, and, and in addition, uh, there is also uh, an SGMF uh, basal uh, gas dispersion tool uh, that can support uh, these safety zone studies. And just to wrap up in this sort of summary point, which also sits in our uh, paper on SIMOPS uh, study findings, uh, in general, it is possible to use using a SIMOPS risk assessment to establish that LNG bunkering operations can be carried out concurrently with other transfers between ship and shore, or between uh, ships if ship-to-ship -ship bunkering method is used, including loading or unloading of cargo, uh, dangerous goods loading or unloading, uh, loading or, or, or unloading of stores and provisions, uh, chemical and other low-flash product handling, uh, as well as bunkering of fuels other than LNG. Okay, just to summarize then uh, my uh, presentation this morning uh, with uh, the sort of key points on the fleet development. At the time of writing, there are 10 LNG bunkering vessels in service, comprising uh, three LNG bunkering vessel conversion cases, four purpose-designed LNG bunker vessels, and one, uh, uh, sorry, two uh, purpose-designed um, um, LNG bunkering barges. Uh, three configurations and two types uh, of LNG cargo tanks have been adopted for LNG bunkering vessels in service under construction or on order as shown in the lower part of uh, this slide here. Uh, IMO uh, type C cylindrical tanks have been adopted uh, consistently uh, with, even with the growth of uh, the uh, fleet of ships on order uh, for around 80% of LNG bunker cargo tanks constructed for LNG bunkering vessels and bunkering barges. And this uh, percentage by tank number remains unchanged since our last uh, update paper in December 2018. Uh, prismatic tanks with membrane cargo uh, containment systems uh, have been adopted now for around 33% of the capacity of LNG uh, fuel bunker cargo tanks in four cases of LNG bunker vessels uh, under construction or on order. This is about a 5% increase by tank capacity uh, since our last update paper in December uh, 2018. In terms of the order book, um, there are 11 uh, LNG bunker vessels and barges under construction for delivery in 2020. And for 2021, a further five uh, LNG bunkering vessels and barges are on order. Um, the last order uh, record at the time of writing uh, was announced on the 5th of December. Uh, and there will be, and there has been, uh, further orders placed uh, at the end of 2019 and in early 2020. Uh, after publication of this paper for 2021 delivery. Okay, thank you very much.